Hello, this is uh, Nick Davis and uh, today we're going to look at how to create a nice bling effect uh, like the one you see here. And we're going to use largely layer effects and adjustment layers to create it. Um, so let's get on with it. There are a number of steps. We're going to go through them one by one. The first thing I'm going to do is create the word and for this I'm going to create a shape layer. I like to use Illustrator for that sort of thing. Uh, so I'll create it in Illustrator. I've already uh, written the word here, as you can see. In Illustrator, I'm going to convert it to outlines and then import it into Photoshop. For this sort of thing, you want to use a nice bulky font. I've used a, a compressed bulky font. This is actually Helvetica compressed. Uh, Impact would be another good one to use. So um, I've written the word. I've given it a bit of additional kerning. Now I'm going to convert it to outlines by going edit, uh, type create outlines and there it is so I'm going to copy that move to Photoshop we've got a blank canvas here to start with I'm going to paste it in as a shape there it appears in the middle of the canvas like that so I'm going to go edit free transform path and then I'm going to uh, enlarge it now if you press shift it will constrain the proportions press out and it will snap it to the center of the canvas so get it to the size you want and then move it to the top again press shift to constrain it to the y-axis move it up until you're happy and go OK. We're going to give it a grey colour for now it doesn't really matter what colour we give it at this stage because the um, layer effects will be overwriting this information uh, this is just so we can see what we're working with so now we have our word in Photoshop let's uh, start applying some uh, effects to it first thing we're going to do is create a nice thick stroke, metallic stroke. So we're going to go uh, select the layer in question, layer effects, stroke. And we're going to select a gradient stroke. We're going to give it a size of 20, nice and bulky. We're done with that layer effect. We're going to move on now to gradient overlay. And we're going to create our own gradient. Uh, we're going to add a few points here to make it um, a bit more metallic. Let's make that uh, white. Give this a grey fill here. Uh, we're happy with that, so I'm going to go OK. I'm going to adjust the angle to, say, 145 degrees. And we're done with that. Now we're going to move to bevel and emboss. We're going to lift out this uh, stroke. To do that, we go to bevel and emboss, and um, we're going to select inner bevel. Give it a depth of say 50%. Slightly more size, say 15. The direction is going to be down. Uh, I'm going to turn off the use global light so that I can have complete control over each layer. So let's say uh, 40 and uh, we're done with that. So already it's starting to take shape. Okay, the next stage is to um, give it a chrome effect and uh, this is very straightforward. First thing we're going to do is go to adjustment layer, curves, and this uh, Bezier line will appear and if you just click on it and move it up and down like this adding points as you go you'll see that it starts to give it a nice chrome effect um, very straightforward very effective so play around with those until you're happy and then go OK the next adjustment layer will be the hue saturation adjustment layer if you click colorize move hue to around 50 saturation up to say 65 or thereabouts uh, take the lightness down as you can see this is starting to look very much more gold and reflective so once you're happy that's uh, the next stage over with okay this is where we're going to add the diamonds now you can get images of diamonds from iStock Photo or dreamstime.com or if you've got diamonds of your own you can take your own pictures here's one I prepared earlier make sure it's in a completely square canvas and centered within that canvas it's probably better to get an image of of something that's been taken directly onto it 
rather than from an angle. So we're going to define a pattern. We're going to select all, go edit, define pattern, and we're going to call it diamond pattern zero one out of the way. Coming back to the gift word, we're going to duplicate this shape layer by dragging it down to the new layer icon down here. I'm going to move it to the top. Now you can see that it's gone grey again because it's above the hue saturation layer and above the curves layer. But we're going to double click the existing effects layer and uh, get rid of gradient overlay by unchecking it. Get rid of stroke by unchecking that. And we're going to go to pattern overlay. Now uh, in the pattern drop down menu you'll see a number of diamonds. Here's the latest one that I've just created. And there it is. Now we're going to reduce it in size. Obviously it's rather big at the moment. So we're going to take that down to say 12. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm uh, pretty happy with this so far. But I think it's looking a bit flat. And there's no light or shade. It's, it needs a bit of depth. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. Right at the top. I'm going to select the gradient tool. Select a, a radial gradient. And create a gradient from top right I think. So we've got a, a, a spotlight and we're going to select soft light on this. Now if I click that layer on and off, you'll see it, it looks like there's a spotlight up here. But to add to the effect, I'm going to click the uh, layer mask down here to do some erasing. I, I like to use layer masks because I work non-destructively. I'm now going to erase in zigzags here. So we've got some areas of shade, some of light, and it just lifts it a bit. If you turn this off and on, it just gives it a bit more depth. We're nearly done with this. Uh, we just need to create a couple of little glints of light and a reflection, and we're finished. Select the crosshair brush uh, from the Photoshop brush palette. Um, I'm going to take the size up to about there and just click once. I'm now going to get uh, an airbrush and click once in the center to give it a bit of glare. Uh, now I'm going to free transform and reduce that and then move it to an appropriate corner. Then holding down the Alt key, you can drag this glint to other areas and it will duplicate the layers in the layer palette as you go. One more over here. And I think that's more than enough. Um, now I'm going to select all these glinting layers and merge them. I'm going to select the layers and then go merge layers. And it'll just merge the ones that you've selected. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is uh, create a reflection. I think the quickest and easiest way to do this is to duplicate this group that we've created here. And uh, I'm just going to delete the um, top two layer, that is the sparkly layer and the soft light spotlight layer that we created earlier. Select all of those and go merge layers. And we can turn these layers on. Now we're going to go to edit, transform, flip vertical. And then keeping the shift key pressed down to constrain it to the y-axis, we're going to move this down. Uh, reduce the opacity to whatever you're happy with. I'm going to make it 40. No, I think I'm going to make it 30. I'm then going to add a layer mask so that I can erase some of this to make it look a little more realistic. Selecting the eraser tool, I'm going to get a nice big brush, uh, a big airbrush, and I'm going to make the opacity on it about 50%. And then I'm going to erase this top bit here. And uh, when I go from left to right, I'm pressing the shift key again to constrain the brush to the X axis. Uh, it's an incredibly versatile keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to do a little bit more here. And we're done.